All right. Thank you. One more time for Ashley and all the comics you've seen tonight. Yeah, we're doing it. We're doing it inside. Some of you are excited. Some of you are tempering expectations. I appreciate that. I like that. I don't want everyone just like, yeah, I want some people that are going to make me earn their love. And that's, you know, like a good stepdad, you know? I'm here for someone else. Yeah. That's kind of what it is. If, if someone brought you to the show tonight, you're kind of like a stepdad. You're like, I'm here for her. Let's see what you can do. You know? Yeah, it's my time to shine. Time to jig. Dance a little for you. So good. I'm so glad to be back. This is my second time uh, in Alameda. Last time we did the... But yeah, last year we did the shows outside. And I didn't appreciate that because I live... <laughs> I live in Southern California where uh, it doesn't get as cold, and so I was out there and I was like, what? You know? It's hard to do me in the cold. I don't have a cold demeanor. I have a very like, oh yeah, turn the heat up, please. Kind of demeanor. That's why we have all the space heaters kind of set out. I don't know if you noticed the space heater on the piano. That was per, that's in my writer. I was like, need some space heaters set up, you know? It's very nice to be here. I love Alameda. I don't know what's going on. And, uh, it's, see, clap it up if you live here. Yeah, you live here, here. All right, a couple people there, right up here. Everyone else, we just kind of snuck on the islands. Yeah. So everyone else knows what I'm talking about. You guys. Yeah, like, it seems like a secret society. A little bit of, like, Alameda, you know? It feels a little bit. Like, I feel like I, my checkout of the hotel is tomorrow, but I feel like if I stayed an extra day, there'd be a knock on my door from the mayor. <laughs> They're like, hey, we love to have you. When are you leaving? <laughs> it feels a little bit like that. Like, it's nice, but also, <laughs> you know? I don't trust it, you know? It's like you guys have something secret going on over here, and you don't want everyone to find out about it. I like it though, it's an island. You keep calling it an island, I don't see it. <laughs> I, I guess, I'll, I won't argue with it. I'm not gonna circumnavigate the island to prove you wrong. You're like, ah, I went all the way around. It's a peninsula. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna do that to you. It's just I landed in Oakland and I took an Uber ride and I didn't notice, you know? Like, I got here on wheels. How islandy is this island? <laughs> but I like it. Staying at the hotel, it's like about seven minutes away. Took the Uber over here and drove by that fancy high school you guys have. Good Lord, what a fancy. Did you see that high school? Did anyone here go to that high school? Oh, there's one person right there. You went to that high school? Yeah. Are you going there currently? <laughs> Yeah, I mean that as a compliment. You look like a youthful young person. You're going there currently. What grade are you in? Junior. Ju you're junior there. Is that the most, in I guess, what do you have to compare it to? Is that the only high school you've ever been to? Yeah. That, is, that is the most intimidating high school. I am 35 years old. I was intimidated in the Uber as it drove by, all right? Like, I, I graduated high school in 2005 with a 2.75 GPA, which is not bad, it's not good, it's right there, you know? And I've never felt bad about my education until I was in an Uber. We went by that school, I looked at it, I'm like, I don't know how to conjugate a verb. And I feel like the building knows. I feel like the building knows. You're gonna grow up to change the world, young man. You're gonna do great, because that is an intimidating school. <laughs> This is so, it looks like a mall. It looks like Socrates went there or something. It's like, that's where that guy went and didn't get a last name, you know? <laughs> you might have a last name. I don't know, but it's cool. I like the, uh, I like the area. Uh, it's very nice. I flew, in, uh, I flew in yesterday and I came in on Southwest, which is always a fun, that's a fun flight, right? A good Southwest flight, just go in there with everybody. I love a good Southwest terminal. Everyone looks like they woke up 10 minutes ago. <laughs> no one's ready. Everyone, no one knows the rules. Like, what? <laughs> just, uh, no care, oh, all right. Like, their carry-on's too big. I can't fit this tent on the plane. Like, no, you can't. You gotta check that. 
you know? Everyone, I love that. Everyone looks like, everyone looks like they're headed to a tragedy. <laughs> everyone looks like they're, no one booked a Southwest flight six months out. That's a flight, <laughs> that's a flight you booked the night before. And you're like, did you bring, you, you remembered the eulogy, right? All right, we gotta, we're going to a funeral. I don't know. <laughs> It's high pressure. I fly all the time, and I f every week I'm at an airport. There's so much pressure. Now you gotta, I, you know, I'm looking out for all the sex trafficking. I don't know if you guys fly as much as I do, but that is every recorded message at every airport in the country. Keep an eye out for sex trafficking. If you see it, let us know. And that's the end of the message. And I'm like, we need more information. Like, uh, what does that look like? What does that, that's not enough info. What am I supposed to look for? Am I supposed to look for a woman crying? Because that's every airport. Every airport I've ever been to, there's a woman crying or about to cry or just finished crying. Am I supposed to look for an angry man? There's an angry man at every airport. It's just not enough, you know? Give me more information. It's a lot of stress on me because I'm trying to be better meant for the world. Like, keep an eye out. And I'm like, uh huh. <laughs> well, it'd be so embarrassing if I called someone out for a second and they weren't, you know? I'm like, that person's upset. You're like, it's just, I think a victim. <laughs> and then they look into it like, no, 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 her carry on was too big. You know? She can't. <laughs> Now she's gonna have to check her bag to her final destination. <laughs> like, I just, I didn't, you weren't clear in the message. She had more information in the loudspeaker. I don't know. We're all trying to do our best. It's nice to be, it's nice to travel within California, but not leave it. So it's nice. I got a quick flight back home. I'll be home before 10 a.m. tomorrow. It'll be nice, you know, it's good to get back home. It's beautiful. I love living in California. It's getting tougher, you know, California is, uh, it's not for the weak, you know? <laughs> it's for us tough people. <laughs> Look at the weather we've been putting up with. <laughs> Two weeks ago, we were in a drought. And now, <laughs> and now we're like, less water, please, good God. <laughs> we just have the extremes. It's either like, no water, you're like, don't you dare take a shower. <laughs> and now you're like, oh my God, get the boat. We are dying. <laughs> We are dying. There's too much water. It's not enough. It's too much. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Can we shower again? Like, can we do that? Just, that's going to be the postcard for California. Just someone showering in a flood. Like they have a clogged drain. You know? It's rough. Yeah, California is rough, man. We're breaking up into two groups. The two groups are getting bigger and bigger, and they're making us choose who we're going to be. And I don't like to choose, but they're making us choose. Who are you going to be? Are you going to be homeless or are you going to be a billionaire? <laughs> and it's hard, because I know which one I want to be. But I also know which one is way more likely. <laughs> that van is calling my name, I got to tell you. <laughs> I was actually thinking about homeless people and billionaires, and you know what? I think it's the same person. <laughs> It's the same person. Like, if you take away the money and the rocket ships and all that, it's the same guy. You know, like, neither, neither group has a ton of friends. They're both kind of judged by mass society. Uh, they both say wild things. Wild things. I can control the weather, you know? I'm gonna buy Twitter. That's the same guy. It's just one of them has the money to do it, and the other one's just yelling it at a bus stop, you know? That's the difference, but other than that, you know, we're splitting hairs. So it's good, doing my best out there, doing my best, trying to live my life <laughs> properly, I don't know. Mainly tonight, I'm just trying to look comfortable in this leather jacket that is what's going on with me. Yeah, could you tell? <laughs> You're like, that's not him at all. I don't know, I bought the, you ever buy like a piece of clothing that you wish you could wear? Like, you can wear whatever you want, but you know what you feel like you can pull off in your own personality. I bought this leather jacket, and I'm like, hell yeah, I want to be a leather jacket guy. And then I put it on, I looked in the mirror, and I'm like, who is that? That's not me at all, you know? I feel like Kaniki right now in Greece. <laughs> That's honestly what I thought high school was going to be. 
Did you think high school was gonna be like Greece? Because it kind of looks like Rydell High down there. Like a fancy Rydell. Yeah. That's honestly what I thought. I was raised by a single mom. We watched Greece a lot during my young formative years. And that's honestly what I thought high school was gonna be. I'm gonna join a fun gang. You know, not the ones you hear about on the news, but just a fun gang where we sing during lunch. <laughs> great would that be? Just hang out with your friends after lunch, do a little scoot up, do, you know? And no one ever told me that wasn't going to happen, because I also never verbalized out loud what I thought it was going to be. Just in the back of my little young head, I'm like, we're going to do a lot of singing and dancing once we get to high school. And then we got to middle school, and I'm like, ah, middle school kind of sucks. This would be a weird pivot. <laughs> If you just went from regular crappy middle school to all of a sudden just <laughs> full theater, you know? But now we got up there and there was no singing or dancing. I was so bummed. I'm like, where's my gang? I was supposed to be in a gang, the T-Birds. I was supposed to be singing. God, tell me more, tell me more. I loved it. I don't know if you guys have rewatched Grease recently. They, they just put it on Netflix. They just put it on Netflix. And I watched it with Emma. She had never watched Grease. And she, we were listening to the lyrics, and she's like, good Lord. And I was like, I don't remember hearing that when I was seven. It's funny, like, when you're seven and, th like, lyrics don't connect with you, they just become part of the song, and then you're older, and you hear every lyric, and you're like, what? Well. <laughs> Tell me more, tell me more. Did she put up a fight? And you're like, what? <laughs> Everything I know about consent says there should be no fight. <laughs> if there is a fight, that means no, I think. But that doesn't fit in with do up up, do up up, do up up. You're like, Ew. ah. I think sometimes it's better not to rewatch things you liked as a kid. You're like, let those memories be in 1993. I know that movie came out before that, but that's when I watched it. 1993. I grew up with a weird childhood. I was watching uh, Grease and Van Damme movies. It was a very oddly rounded child. Yeah? Van Damme? Yeah, that's what I want. I, when I was a kid, I, I knew all the dance steps to Greece, and I could do the splits because of Van Damme. I was like the weirdest kid of all time. I loved it, man. I thought that Van Damme was the best because I was born in Budapest. I had an accent, you know, as a kid, and here was a guy who had an accent, and he looked uncomfortable on camera. And I was like, that's who I am. I'm like, Van Damme, you know? And if you get uncomfortable, you just do the splits. That's what you do. It's a great icebreaker. He makes some new friends, especially at that age. You're seven. You're like, my name's Gary. My name's John. And I'm like, yeah, splits, you yeah. <laughs> know? I'm Zoltan. And then you full. You made a friend for life right there. You do the splits in 93, you know? I loved it. I actually got to meet Jean-Claude Van Damme when I was a, chi a kid. I was, we lived in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I was in first grade. And we lived with this Hungarian lady who knew the makeup artist for the movie Sudden Death, which is shot in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It was not the best movie, it's based on hockey. Uh, Van Damme plays a firefighter who terrorists are gonna blow up the hockey arena, and then he has to go, st he's one firefighter, he's like, I'm gonna kick these terrorists ass. And he shows up, somehow he ends up in the game. There's a scene where he's the goalie, somehow he like, <laughs> he got into a fight in the locker room and he accidentally got into a goalie costume, and next thing he knows, he's like, ah, glove save! Like he had, he did the splits with the gear, glove save. And I, man, when I was a kid, that was the best. But I got to go on set and watch him like shoot a scene. And I didn't know about stunt doubles, you know? I was in the first grade. Like I thought these artists were sacrificing their lives. Like if I thought you died in an action movie, I thought you sacrificed your life for this art. You are like, no, no, that guy got his head kicked off in his fifth round because he loves acting, you know? And so when I found out we're going on the set, I'm like, we're gonna go watch a murder. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, I know. that's what I thought I was gonna go see. Like, people didn't understand, like, I watched Bloodsport when I was like five, because we had moved to the country and my mom didn't know what a rating system was. You know, she, she was learning to speak English and, and I'd, I'd be like, mom, I'm gonna watch this movie. She's like, okay, you know? 
and I would just be watching Van Damme breaking people's legs, snapping their heads off, and I'm five, just in the splits, going, yeah, this is the best thing I've ever seen. And then I went to school, and my new friends in school were like, do you watch the Power Rangers? And then I went to watch the Power Rangers with them at their house. I'm like, this is the lamest thing I've ever seen. Everyone's still alive, no one's bleeding. Why, is it, why aren't any of them sleeping with the women? What's going on? Like, that's what I was, I was five years old and I already knew about all of this, you know? And so I had like a weird upbringing because we didn't know about rating systems. So I went in to go see Jean-Claude Van Damme shoot a movie and we went into the fight scene. That's when I found out about stunt doubles. Like, he didn't do anything. Like, I, you had, I was seven years old. I'm like, I'm gonna watch him do the thing. He's gonna come in and kick that guy's ass. And we're like, action. And then he'd come in, he'd go, <laughs> and it'd be a cut. And then it'd be, he'd leave. And then some other guy who'd kind of look like him would just finish off. The <laughs> and I just remember, like, it was almost like coming downstairs and seeing Santa Claus making out with your mother. <laughs> I grew up without a dad, so that was my Santa Claus moment. <laughs> was seeing Jean-Claude Van Damme not be Jean-Claude Van Damme in front of my eyes. And then I was like, well, at least afterwards, maybe I'll get a picture with this phony. <laughs> and he didn't take a picture with me. He came by and he's like, I don't, someone's like, he doesn't have time, so all I have is a Polaroid of me with a stunt double. <laughs> the guy who did the real work. <laughs> That was an impromptu story that doesn't have an end to it. And I know most jokes are supposed to ha 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 and then pay off and then, but I just felt really comfortable with you and I wanted to let you know that I was a big Van Damme fan. And I, I the Power Rangers are lame. <laughs> you guys are fun, this is the last show of the weekend. We're here to, you know, have a good time. Yeah, we are, absolutely. You guys have already been the best crowd of the entire weekend. Yeah. Oh, you have. You have. Every crowd we've had all weekend, they've been fun, but they haven't been like, yeah. You know? Every crowd we've had has been like, yes. <laughs> Which is still good. I'll take that. But you guys are like, next level, you know? Everyone else was like going to the opera. You guys are like, monster jam. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Grave diggers coming in. <laughs> it's wonderful. But yeah, I have enjoyed uh, being in your neighborhood. I, I went and had breakfast this morning. I want is uh, I met a, a, a fan earlier today. Is Brad here? Brad? No. no? Uh, wow, he did. What's that? I'll be here, Brad. I'll be here, Brad. <laughs> that sounded inviting and threatening at the same time. I'll be here, Brad. And you're like, is this a Van Damme scene? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, well, that's really weird because I asked this on the early show too, and he wasn't there either. <laughs> I'm really concerned because I met a guy named Brad at a coffee shop. He's like, I'm coming to your show tonight. And I'm like, which one? He goes, seven o'clock. And I asked at seven, he wasn't here. And now he's not here. Does anyone know Brad? <laughs> Listen, you damn islander, speak up. Where? What have you done with Brad? Did he not pay his HOA fees? What did you guys do with Brad? <laughs> it was wild, yeah, he recognized me at the coffee shop, which is like an exciting time for me. I don't get recognized often, so it makes me, <laughs> you know? Because I just went in to have some coffee and a breakfast, and I was sitting there, and, and I could tell he was looking at me. He looked over at me, but I thought he was paying attention to what was going on behind me. Because uh, behind me, there was a woman with a baby who was yelling for a beer. Which <laughs> that's pretty attention grabbing. All right, if you're at a coffee shop, you don't even know they have beer, and someone comes in with a baby, you guys have beer! And you're like, whoa! And then I'm looking at that, and then I catch his eyes, I'm like, you, no, you're probably looking at that, right? Because that's, you know, we have a lot of questions. <laughs> And he comes over and he goes, are you Zoltan? And I'm like, yeah, I'm Zoltan. And we shake hands, he goes, dude, I'm coming to your show. And I'm like, hell yeah, I appreciate it. And that part made me feel good. But I also never assume that anyone recognizes me because it's only happened to me like five times. And usually I'm like, I can tell because someone makes eye contact and they're like, oh. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, it's me. And I welcome it with open arms. 
but something happened that made me stop going. <laughs> and it happened at LAX. I was at an airport. I was at the LA airport, and I was sitting there waiting to board a flight, and there was a dude just looking at me, and I could see, he was like, mm -hmm, and I was like, man, here we go. I, I started like posing, I'm like, eh. it is me. <laughs> And then he, after a couple minutes, he gets up and walks over. So in my head, I'm like, all right, be ready, be courteous. Don't be like Jean-Claude Van Damme, you know? <laughs> Don't snub this, be polite, and just be like, yeah, yes, it is me. Well, how are you? <laughs> you know, I was getting myself ready for that. And then as he comes over, he's like, hey. And I'm like, yes. And he goes, yeah, uh, your flashlight's on your phone, and you're blinding my wife. <laughs> And ever since then, I've never assumed anyone recognizes me. Because <laughs> I'm always like, ah, I think I'm blinding someone's wife with my eyes. <laughs> but I, I, really, I really am concerned about Brad. Uh, I think we're, this is a search party now. We're all going to hit the mean streets of Alameda. <laughs> figure it out man thank you so much for watching my video i hope you enjoyed it i hope you liked it shared it subscribe to it hit the notification bell do all the things youtube makes you want to do uh other than that i wanted to let you know that i'm constantly on tour so go to my website zoltancomedy.com and see if i'm coming to a town near you thank you kindly